chairman of the Joseph Littles and Guzo Saba Charter School in West Palm Beach. Tell us about the school and its current predicament. Well, thank you, Elton. We are the state's only African-centered public charter school. In fact, we're the only African-centered public school of any sort, charter or otherwise, in the entire state of Florida. What we mean by that is that we teach our children from the perspective that they, in fact, are not only important, but that they're, in a sense, the center of their own universe. Our school has been in operation continuously for the past 10 years. In fact, we celebrated our 10th anniversary of continuous operation on January 20th of this year, which it turns out happens to be the same date that uh, the first uh, president of the United States of African ancestry was inaugurated. So we have that distinction of having celebrated our 10th anniversary on the same day that uh, Barack Obama uh, officially became the president of the United States. But in spite of the fact that we have been uh, able to survive for 10 years plus now, uh, we are still in a situation that we never envisioned uh, in the earlier stages of our school that we would be in at this stage of our existence. And that is to say that we still continue to struggle uh, with financial shortfalls that are rooted in the formula that the legislature saw fit to establish when they created the enabling uh, legislation for charter schools. By that I mean we receive a share of the state funds which are intended to operate schools and we get a modest amount of money from the state to apply to the need for our school to have a building or a facility uh, to do the business and the work of educating in. However, the primary source of revenue and of means to provide buildings and facilities and other capital needs for public education in the state of Florida is the local ad valorem tax referred to as the two mill tax. That is the money that enables local school districts to build the rather sometimes fanciful buildings and structures that you will find especially in Palm Beach County where to his credit the superintendent has done an exemplary job of providing outstanding school facilities for regular public schools in Palm Beach County. However, the legislation does not require that local school districts share the ad valorem tax revenues from the two mill uh, levy with charter schools. So as a result of that, we are forced to supplement the money that we get from the state for capital outlay with funds from our operating budget. And that tends to be a, a very devastating situation because that means that a substantial portion of the school's revenue never gets into the classroom. And that means that we are not able to hire as many teachers as we need. Perhaps we cannot compete uh, with the school district and other uh, potential employers for the best teacher talent because we either cannot pay them the comparable salaries that they can get elsewhere, or more often is the case, we cannot even come close to providing the kind of uh, French benefit package that uh, the school district is able to provide. And in this county, other employers such as the county itself and the, mun the municipalities uh, have a tendency to also hire people that could otherwise qualify to be teachers. So we are in a situation where we continue to strive and to struggle to make financial ends meet, even as we attempt to serve the more difficult uh, student demographics in the school district. So we're in the process at this point of beginning to have discussions with the school district relative to the so-called stimulus package, which the new Obama administration has um, developed and put a lot of money into that package for education generally and a substantial amount, they say, for charter schools in particular. Now the primary purpose of the stimulus package is, as they call it that, to stimulate the economy. And the feeling is that uh, education is a way that you can basically accomplish two good things at one time. 
you first and foremost, of course, facilitate and support education in the public sphere, but you also uh, can stimulate the economy because by keeping teachers employed, uh, by keeping vendors who provide services to uh, schools working, uh, you also keep their employees employed. So the idea is to both enhance and supplement the educational process while at the same time putting money into the hands and into the coffers of people who we know are going to spend that money. So by virtue of uh, allowing more money, federal funds in this case, to be pumped into local school districts, the theory is that we will be able to stimulate the economy as well as enhance public education. Explain why your school is a D school in the state's FCAT's testing. Excellent question. Uh, number one, we have a, as a charter school, we have a tendency because we target children who live in public housing or who otherwise rely on the public for their housing needs. And so we tend to get the students who are the more difficult students uh, that the traditional schools have. And of course, when you collect the students that are the more difficult to educate and sometimes to get to conform behaviorally, then you're going to have additional issues that you have to deal with. So a, uh, shall we say, a great deal of the time and effort that we spend with our children and with our students is spent helping them to modify their behavior, so to speak. So that, that tends to not allow us to spend as much time on the rudiments of teaching to the test. And that's what happens when you have a test such as the FCAT. We're obliged to teach to the test. It's not a content-focused test. That is to say that we can actually not teach any of the traditional content material that you expect the school to teach and we can teach to the test and children would be able to learn to pass that test even though they may not learn the content that the state's own uh, Florida Sunshine statutes require that we're supposed to teach. So we're in a situation where we have to, on the one hand, make sure that we maintain classroom decorum, for example, that we teach our children the Sunshine State Standards, which is obligatory, and at the same time, we're supposed to teach them how to pass a particular test that does not itself directly relate to the other things that are far more important in terms of what we have to do. What is your current situation with your rent and the prospect of the students in the school being evicted? Well, because of the fact that we uh, ran into a situation where our under-enrollment, of course, affects our revenue stream, and because we were under-enrolled for much of the school year, uh, that means, of course, our revenue was down. However, that does not mean that you can simply automatically cut back your operating costs to meet your revenue stream. For example, we're a K through eight school. That means we have nine grades and nine classrooms. We have to have nine teachers. So if we don't have 20 students in a class, which is the average that we'd like to have, we still have to have teachers in those classrooms. How can, what message would you like to send to the public about what the impact would be on the students and the community as a whole if your school is closed down? Well, first of all, we're not presupposing that the school is going to be closed down because we have proved our worth, we've proved our mettle. Uh, a lot of sacrifices have gone into keeping this school going for the 10 years plus that we've been going. What we do, do want, however, to uh, get the public to understand is that there is a price to be paid for these successes that many charter schools are having in spite of the odds against them. And one of the things that we think is fundamental is that there be an elimination of the disparity between the amount of money that is paid for regular school children and that which charter schools receive.